January 1991. It's a brand new year, and I read six books. And we'll get to my anecdote uh, a little later, at the end of this list. So let's just jump right in. The first book I read in January of 1991 was Never Deal with a Dragon by Robert N. Charette. Again, as seems to be the case quite often, I'm not sure how to pronounce his name. Uh, this is a Shadowrun book. I don't have that written in my list. This is before I finalized how I was doing things. Nowadays, I would have Shadowrun written down. So, uh, all I have is the title, Never Deal with a Dragon, the author's name that I can't pronounce. Uh, Shadowrun was, I think it started as a role-playing game, and now there's card games and there may be other stuff. But it's a world where it's, it's cyberpunk mixed with magic. Uh, and corporations run everything. Um, I think it's a great concept. I love that idea. I think cyberpunk is cool. You know, magic, fantasy, that kind of stuff is cool. But as I recall, I was not thrilled with the execution in this book. I don't know if we'll come across another Shadowrun book I may not have read anymore. Because this one, I, I seem to recall, was a little disappointing. But I love the idea of this crazy future cyberpunk technology mixed with dragons and orcs and trolls and all this other stuff. Um, and this book, I believe, deals with this guy that works for a corporation, because I think everybody does, and his sister disappears, so he wants to get out, so there's, you know, he has to go through a bunch of crap to try to get out from under the heel of the, the man, but not very memorable. Next up, we have Picture of Evil by Graham Masterton. Uh, this is a take on the picture of Dorian Gray. The main characters are Cordelia and Maurice Gray, and they're young and beautiful, and there's a picture that is not young and beautiful. Um, and I, I did not enjoy this when I read it. If I ever find another copy, I may give it another try, because I've enjoyed everything else that I've read by Graham Masterton. But this one didn't do anything for me. Then we have On the Eighth Day by Ellery Queen. And Ellery Queen is the main character of the Ellery Queen books. And in this one, he has gone to Hollywood. It's in the 40s. He's in Hollywood writing propaganda, pro-American, anti-Nazi propaganda for Hollywood. And he's getting burned out, so he decides to drive home across the country. His car breaks down in Death Valley, and he runs into a cult in the desert, and there's a murder, and he's got to solve it. It's Ellery Queen. Typical Ellery, well, I mean, the storyline, not very typical, but the, the writing, very typical Ellery Queen. Next up, Education of a Wandering Man by Louis L'Amour. Uh, this is the memoir of one of the most famous, uh, one of the most popular Western authors, author of Westerns, not like an author from the Western world. Um, and so it talks about, and this is the word used in the description, talks about his time as a hobo. That's the word they use. He was a cattle skinner. He was a merchant seaman. He was a professional bare, bare knuckle boxer. Um, I mean, these were some, these were the old days when people did all that sort of stuff. Uh, I read Louis L'Amour books, and so I thought it'd be interesting to read about his life, and it is. It is what it is. It's a memoir. Excuse me, it's been a long day. Next up, the one book that I have, The Outfit by Richard Stark. It is a Parker novel. It's the third Parker novel. And my recollection is that the first three books um, are really something of one long story, almost a trilogy in and of itself. Uh, in the first one, The Hunter, you have uh, Parker on a job with his wife, I believe it is, and someone else. 
He gets betrayed, left for dead. He comes back, goes after the people that betrayed him, and takes on the mob. And then the second book is The Man with a Getaway Face, where the mob's coming after Parker because of what he did in the first book. And he ends up, he has to get plastic surgery and everything and try to hide. And now, in this one, the mob, the outfit, sends a hitman, or maybe more than one, after Parker. And he's had enough, so he's taking it back to the outfit. He's going after him. It's on the back. It says, heist after heist after heist. Um, so, been a while since I've read all three and as I said, my recollection is they kind of, each one flows into the other. Um, I don't recall, I don't think, after this, that it's like that. I mean, it's a series, there's character progressions, all that stuff, things come back. But the first three are the three that really sort of could have almost been just one big book. If I remember correctly. But it is, it's a Parker book. It's great stuff have the entire series, because it's that good. And then finally, the last book I read in January of 1991 is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum. Do I have to tell you what this is about? Um, I will say the book is quite different than the most famous movie, the Judy Garland musical movie. Um a lot of different characters and, and areas of the Land of Oz that are not in the movie. Uh, the most memorable one to me is there's these porcelain doll people. I believe, if I remember, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, the reason I read this book, here's my little anecdote. I was at Bowling Green. It was a new semester, and I was taking, one of my classes was, Fantasy literature. Now, the fantasy in fantasy literature was a very generic term. Um, it, it wasn't, we weren't just reading Tolkien and that kind of stuff. As a matter of fact, the only book that would fall under what most people would think of as fantasy is The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. Uh, as I go through these months. We'll cover the rest of them. I, there's only one book in the class that I didn't read. We'll get to that when we get to the penultimate book of that class. Uh, because I couldn't find an affordable copy. And I tried to cheat. Because I believe every book we read, except for the one nonfiction book, was made into a movie. Has been made into a movie. And so for that final book, I'm teasing you, I, tr I had seen the movie, I tried to use that as uh, my basis for what was going on in class. It did not go well, because there were major differences between the book and the movie. Um, yeah, loved that class. Got to read some great stuff, the first of which was The Wonderful Wizard of Oz. And uh, you'll find out about the rest as we move along through the months. So that's it. Six books, January 1991. We got a techno fantasy, science fiction fantasy, whatever, straight up horror, mystery, a memoir, a crime book, a fantasy. That is a hell of a mix. Uh, I'm going to make the question for this video simple. Are you a fan of The Wizard of Oz? Um, in any incarnation of the Judy Garland movie is not the first time that this story was made into a movie. I've never seen the old one. I hear it's very racist. I've seen the Judy Carlin movie many, many times because it's my mother's favorite movie. One of her favorites. Every time it was on TV, and this was back in the day before home video and anything. So if you wanted to watch something, you watched it when it was on TV, that was it. And it was shown every year, and my mother would make a special cake and do a whole thing, like the day that Wonder the the Wizard of Oz was on, was a very special day. It was like somebody's birthday or almost Christmas, except nobody got gifts. Uh, but we watched it every year. Um, it's a Return to Oz, the one with Feruza Balk. I've never seen that. Uh, 
I've not seen was it Oz the Great and Powerful, the one with James Franco. I believe there were others. And I think the only one I've seen is the Judy Garland. Uh, I enjoyed the book well enough. Not so much that I went and read the rest. But it was fine. It was entertaining. I did like that it was different than the movie. Uh, but what about you? Have you seen any of the movies? Read any of the books? What are your thoughts on The Wizard of Oz? There you go. We'll talk about it in the comments. And speaking of comments, if you have any comments, questions, or corrections, please put them in the comments below. Comments are open for spoilers. Just post a spoiler warning. We try to be polite here on my channel. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you'd care to follow me on other social media, my Twitter is at Ronin5757. My Instagram, where I post pictures of books, comic books, board games, and fuzzy animals, is Eric Smith 5757 That's Eric with a K. E-R-I-K-S-M-I-T-H-5757. That's all I've got for you this time. So until next time, read more books.